Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 43 of the chapter Equilibrium. In part 42, I told you about the solubility equilibria of sparingly soluble salts. Moving on with our discussion of that, in this video, I'm going to tell you about the solubility product constant, that is KSP. Now we have sparingly soluble salts and when they dissociate, we are going to calculate the solubility product of these salts. For example, we start with an example of salt barium sulfate and barium sulfate is a solid salt which is added to water and when you dissolve it, it forms a saturated solution in water. And when a saturated solution is formed in water, this saturated solution of barium ions and sulfate ions is in equilibrium with the solid barium sulfate. We've studied about the dynamic nature of equilibrium, how the number of molecules which are entering into the solution in the form of ions, that is which are getting dissociated, is equal to the number of ions which are getting associated again to give back the salt. And therefore the concentration of both the barium sulfate solid and the ions becomes constant at equilibrium. So you can calculate the equilibrium constant for such an equilibrium. And how do we calculate the equilibrium constant? Equilibrium constant K is the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactant. And we do that. And just like liquids, a pure solid is also 100% pure. So there's no point of talking about its, uh, its concentration because it is whole. If it is whole, it means its concentration is one. So we can ignore this, So, or either we can ignore it, or since it is one, we can just put it on the other side with K in the equation, and we get K into barium sulfate will give you just the concentration of the ions, which are the products. Now, the, since this is just the product of the ions, therefore, and these ions, they talk of the solubility of the salt. Therefore, we call it the solubility product constant. This constant is now known as KSP, which is known as the solubility product constant. Let us assume that one mole of barium sulfate or any salt that we are taking, one mole of it is dissociating. If one mole is dissociating, we and we assume that the molar uh, solubility for one mole of that salt is S. Let us assume that S is the molar solubility. S is the solubility for one mole. Then taking the number of moles to be S for each product or each ion, we can substitute this S in this equation. So what do we get? For this particular uh, salt, that is barium sulfate, the solubility product constant, the value of the solubility product constant is 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 10. So we know that. So let us put this value here. KSP would be equal to the barium ion concentration in terms of uh, solubility in moles per liter. So it will be number of moles, uh, I mean number of moles here would be S, solubility in number of moles and S if there is one mole of barium, there is one mole of sulfate, so it will be S and S. So S into S, we are substituting these concentrations with S, the value S. So the number of moles of the product, the ions totally, would be S square, right? So this would be 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 10 is equal to S square. From this, we can calculate the molar solubility, that is the value for S. So this was KSP was the solubility product constant. From the solubility product constant, you can calculate the molar solubility S. And to do that, what do you do? If S square is 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 10, then S would be 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 10 to the power of 1 by 2, right? It will be the square root of it. So which is equal to, if you calculate this, this comes out to be 1.05 into 10 to the power minus 10. The square root of this would be 10 to the power minus 5. And M is moles per liter. These many moles per liter would be the molar solubility of barium sulfate. Now, this was an equation which was simple because we had only one mole of barium and one mole of sulfate being formed. What about uh, an equation or a salt where the stoichiometry of the formula has a different number of 
uh, ions or moles of ions. For example, you have zirconium phosphate. The formula for zirconium phosphate is ZR3 and PO4 hold 4. So there are four phosphate ions that will be formed and three zirconium ions. And remember, whenever you have such a formula, the charge on the positive ion is usually the number here and the charge on the negative ion is usually a number here. And sometimes it is a multiple which has been simplified also. But you can calculate the, you get an idea about the charges of the cation and anion from the formula. So you have three, coming back to this equation, in zirconium phosphate, when it dissociates, you get three moles of zirconium and four moles of phosphate ions. And in terms of molar solubility, how many moles of zirconium would be 3s and how many moles of phosphate would be 4s. Now, find out the Ksp for this. What would Ksp be? It would be the, it would be 3 zirconium, that is the concentration of zirconium to the power of 3 and concentration of phosphate to the power of 4, right? So, since concentration of zirconium would be how many moles per liter? It would be 3 moles per liter if it is 3. But here, since we are writing, this is molar solubility. So we'll have to, if it is, if it has a stoichiometric coefficient 3, we will multiply it by 3. So that it tells us if there are 3 moles of it being, if 1 mole of zirconium phosphate is being, uh, we are calculating the solubility for 1 mole of zirconium phosphate, it would result in the formation of 3 moles of zirconium ions and 4 moles of phosphate ions. So you have to put that in the, in this uh, equation too. So, Ksp would be 3s, 3 moles of s, 3 moles of zirconium and 4 moles of phosphate, so 4s to the power, you know, to the power of their stoichiometric coefficient, so 3s to the power 3 and 4s to the power 4 to its stoichiometric coefficient. That will give you the Ksp and when you calculate, simplify this, this means it is 3 cube into 4 to the power 4 into s to the power of 3 plus 4 which is 7. So 3 to the power 3 and 4 to the power 4, when you calculate these and you multiply it, you get 6, 9, 1, 2 and s to the power of 7, right? Do you remember what we did here? We calculated the value of s square, which was 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 10, which was given to us. Here we have calculated the value uh, that comes out to be s to the power 7. And from this, you can calculate the value of S. Whatever is the value of Ksp, here we were given the value of Ksp. Here, whatever is the value of Ksp, you can check it in the table and then substitute it here, divide it by 6912 and this would be S to the power 7 would be equal to Ksp upon 6912 and therefore S would be all of this to the power of 1 by 7. Just as we found all of it, s square to find s from s square we put it to the power of 1 by 2 we found the square root so you here you will find out the uh, you will put all of this to the power of 1 by 7 so we understand what happens according to the stoichiometry of the formula and the equation how do you find out the solubility product constant so using this information or whatever you have understood now we can generalize this whole thing and how can we generalize it? Let us assume that there is, an, uh, there is a hypothetical equation where the salt is mx xy and it produces x moles of m with p positive charge and y moles of x with q negative charge. What would the solubility product be in terms of s? Ksp would be equal to x of s to the power of x and y of s, uh, y s to the power of y, its stoichiometric coefficient and just as we did it here, this would be x squared that is 3 cube into 4 cube, so this would be x to the power x, y to the power y into s to the power of x plus y, that it was 3 plus 4 here, here it will be x s to the power of x plus y. So, s to the power of x plus y would be equal to Ksp divided, you take this under down here. So, Ksp upon x to the power x and y to the power y. Therefore, s would be equal to Ksp upon x to the power x, y to the power y whole to the power of inverse of 1 upon x plus, inverse of x plus y, that is 1 upon x plus y. So this is a general, like you have just made it a general formula for all equations. Whatever the equation is, see what the cation is, what the anion is and then solve it according to this. 
Now there is a solved example in your textbook. That is question 7.26. It says that calculate the solubility of A2X3, again a hypothetical equation. Here the X and Y were assumed. Here the X and Y are given. A2X3. In pure water, assuming no ion reacts with water. We are assuming that no ion reacts with water, which means that whatever is dissociated remains in the water uh, as ions. So it re reacts with water and Ksp of the solution is given to us. So let us now solve this question. The formula of the compound given to us is A2X3. And as you know, I told you from the formula itself, you can understand what the charges of the cation and anion would be. If there are two cations, two atoms of cation being balanced by three atoms of the anion, it means the charge of A should be three positive and X should be two negative. This results in the formation of A two atoms of or two ions, cations of A three positive plus three cation uh, anions three X two negative. In terms of molar solubility, this would be 2s and this would be 3s. Now, what would the solubility product be equal to? Ksp, which is given to us, is 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 23 will be equal to, the solubility product would be 2s square into 3s cube. That is to the powers of the stoichiometric coefficients. And which would be equal to 2 square into 3 cube into s to the power of 2 plus 3. Do you see here? x plus y, this is what we've done. x to the power of 2 plus 3. So s to the power of 2 plus 3, what would it be equal to? s to the power of 2 plus 3, that is 5, would be equal to 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 23 upon 2 square into 3 cube would come out to be 108. So upon 108, right? So from this, you get this and S, five, S to the power 5, instead of writing 2 plus 3, let me write 5 here. S to the power of 5 would be equal. So what would S be equal to? S would be equal to 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 23 upon 108 divided by 1 upon 5, right? So, if you calculate this, this 108, 1.1 upon 108, this approximately is 100 and this would be uh, almost 1 if you really look at this. So, this would come out to be equal to 1 into 1.0 into 10 to the power minus 25, right? You can take this as this and to the power of 1 by 5. To the power of 1 by 5. And this would come out to be equal to the fifth root of it would be 1 into 10 to the power minus 5. So that would be the value of S. Yeah, 1 into 10 to the power minus 5 moles per yes for s it is molar uh, solution so it is moles per liter or mole per liter mole per liter. right so that is how you would calculate the value of s in the next solve example, I will not be solving this problem, I will just read out the problem. The problem says that the value of values of Ksp for two sparingly soluble salts, nickel hydroxide and silver cyanide are 2.0 into 10 to the power minus 15 and 6 into 10 to the power minus 17 respectively. Which salt is more soluble? Now the solubility product constant only tells us how much of reaction or uh, how much of product is present in terms of concentration but their solubility in moles per liter has to be calculated so you will write down the equations for both of these reactions that is nickel what are the salts nickel hydroxide and silver cyanide 
and you write down their equations, calculate the values of S for both the equations, for both the reactions, and then compare the values of S for both of them. Whichever has a higher value of S, that is, which has a larger number of moles per liter, is more sol in the ionic state, is more soluble. So that is how you would be solving this problem. With that, I finish this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.